All right, so in this video, we're going to look at first uh, an open loop control, and then we're going to look at closed loop control um, using proportional control. So um, the open loop, where you have, we're going to have a set point. My set point is going to just be 5 volts for each example that I'm going to do in this video. So I have 5 volts here, and I'm going to feed this um, out of my PLC. So I have my PLC here that's going to send out an analog output okay, to my system. Now my system is the RLC circuit. So I have a resistor here, I have an inductor, and then I have a capacitor. Okay, And so it's a series RLC circuit and what I'm going to do is my output, my process parameter, is going to be the voltage across the capacitor. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply proportional control. So I'm going to have a, a gain factor here, call it KP, which is going to be proportional control. So I'm going to feed back the voltage across my capacitor. I'm going to feed that back into my PLC it's going to generate an error signal, which is the difference between the set point and my voltage across my capacitor. Multiply that times the gain, and then feed that into the system, this RLC circuit that I have down here. So that's what we're going to control. Now, I've already built the program. Okay, so let's look at our program. First thing we want to do is look at our tags. Okay, so I have several tags. I have um, my uh, I have some relay light tags set up. Um, Pre-wired lights of the on the PLC trainer. I have a amber, green, red light, um, and a white light down here. So those are all uh, already pre-configured and set. Then um, I have a start and stop button, which I'm not really going to use. I have a three position selector switch, so it, it goes to the left uh, for bit two or to the right for bit three. In the center, they're both uh, zero. And then I have the four position selector switch. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to select my gain by selecting that switch. So these are just Boolean switch settings. And then I have gains here that I'll actually, when I, all I have to do is flip the switch to change my gain. So my gain is uh, KP, this proportional gain, but I'm going to uh, set that gain by using the, um, using these tags here and the selector switch. So I can uh, make a qu quick changes just by flipping the switch. Okay, uh, my input is coming in. Um, remember, the input is the voltage across the capacitor. That's my process parameter or my process variable of the sy system I want to measure. So it's an RLC circuit, and I want to measure this uh, the voltage across the capacitor. But when it comes in, it's going to be in millivolts. Okay, so let's look at, uh, and the same for my control out, it's going to be in millivolts. Let's look at my configuration of my card. So my card, my input uh, zero, channel zero is enabled. It's set to a voltage range, minus 10 volts, to plus 10 volts, and a filter of 5 hertz to kind of keep the noise low. And it's set to engineering units. Okay, so engineering units means that 10 volts... Uh, was actually going to be 10,000 millivolts. Okay, and the same for the output. I have it enabled. Um, it doesn't have a filter setting, but it's set to minus 10 to plus 10 engineering units. So that those are the configurations of my input card. So when we come back and look at the tags, we see that channel zero input I for input is going to be in millivolts. That's going to be the voltage across the capacitor in millivolts. And then we're going to have the voltage out, which was our control signal out, which will also be in millivolts. Those are the actual outputs. Then I have a real 
variable that's going to be the voltage across my capacitor in just volts. So I'll be dividing by a thousand. That's my scaling for this. And then I have my control out will also have to be scaled before it goes out. I have my set point, which is a real value. So I can put in, you know, values of like 3.75 or, you know, fractional values if I want. And my error definitely has to be of real value because it might have some floating points in there. Okay. And then here's my actual gain that I'm going to use in the closed loop control. All right. So now we will look at our... Okay, so now we'll look at the actual ladder logic. Okay, so when we look at the actual ladder logic here, uh, the very first rung is, re, um, is going to happen after we read the input. So the inputs come in into um, the various uh, tags, and of course the most important one here is the voltage across the capacitor. And again, the input comes in as millivolts as an integer value. So I'm going to divide that millivolts by a thousand into a floating point destination, a real uh, number destination, which is going to be my voltage across the ca capacitor in volts, right? This is the input, V cap N is in millivolts and it's an integer. So I need to make that a floating point value. I need to do that every scan so there's no contacts on the left here. We, we're going to do that no matter what. Okay. I'm also going to calculate my error. My error is the set point minus uh, the V cap. Um, I actually used a compute statement here, but I could have actually used just the ordinary math subtraction uh, block for that um, either way. But I'm calculating my error signal here, which is the difference between the two. Then I have four rungs, which are my uh, four position selector switch, which are simply going to move my gain into the actual, my a, a value of gain into the actual KP gain value. So uh, the gain will either be half of one half, right? 0 0.5 or one half, or a gain of one, or a gain of two, or a gain of five. So I've preset those gains in here. On an, I went ahead and preset those gains ahead of time. I also preset my set point to be five so that uh, I can just flip a switch and, and have it output a response. Okay. All right, so here is the center position of the three position selector switch when both of these are open. And so I'm going to move zero in. So to, to basically just output nothing or put the system at rest, or dis, which will discharge any voltage on the capacitor, I, I put the left selector switch in the center position. And then if I flip it to the left position, what I'm going to do is simply move my set point out. So I'm simply going to output five volts. And I'll also uh, enable the red light on the PLC. On the other hand, if I move the selector switch to the right, it's going to do the closed loop control or proportional control. So remember, proportional control, you just multiply that gain value KP times your error. And uh, so when I do that, I'll also have it turn on the green light. All right, so uh, once we've done that, I have a couple of rungs here that just use a greater than block to turn on the amber or the white light. So if my voltage across my capacitor exceeds, you know, three volts, it'll turn on the amber light. If it exceeds five volts, the white light will also come on. And that just gives me an indication of, of how much voltage is on that capacitor without actually having to try to read um, a scope or get a voltmeter or something like that. I can just visually see the light and know, have an indication of how high the voltage is on the uh, capacitor. 
And then the very last thing we do, and again, there's no um, nothing on the left side here. We do this every time we send out our control signal. And our control signal um, is the control calculated control value times a thousand to convert it back into millivolts. So control out is in volts, multiply it by a thousand makes it millivolts, which matches the engineering settings that I have set up for my output. Uh, one other thing to look at on the output settings, we need to make sure that uh, your voltage can swing. So right now it's uh, my lowest that I'll allow out is zero volts. My highest is 10 and a half volts. Okay. All right, so those are the settings there uh, for the scope. So let's just take a look here as we um, as I activate it uh, some here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my scope, put it into single mode to, uh, to trigger. So it's ready to trigger. And I'm going to do an open loop on here. And I've got my resistor set to 50 ohms on my RLC circuit. All right, so it's triggered. It's going to take about 10 seconds to display it. And you can see here, it has very little resistance. You see the yellow is the step response. So we go down from zero up to five volts. Uh, it's, uh, the yellow is immediate because we're doing no control. We're just outputting. We're saying we were at zero. When I flipped the switch, it went to five volts. The blue is the charging of the capacitor. Now again, I, I had the switch set at 50 ohms. So it charged very, very quickly because there was little resistance. I'm now going to flip the switch into the 1K, and I'm going to run it again, but I'm using a 1K ohm resistor instead of a 50 ohm resistor. And so I trigger it, and it's collecting the data now. And what you're going to see is see how long it's taking to charge. That's because it's a 1,000 ohm compared to 50 ohm. So it's taking a long time for that capacitor to charge up, okay? That is open loop. Both of these are open loop uh, with the two different resistors. Now I'm gonna go ahead and leave the resistor in the 1K position, but I'm going to close the loop, but put just a little bit of gain on here. And so I'm gonna energize my capacitor again, and I'm going to do closed loop proportional gain uh, with a gain of one half. So if you notice here, right, the gain is one half because I have it set on the lowest position. And so you can see now that the, uh, um, the gain, it actually was really high and then it came down. But the other thing you notice, right, is it's not going to five volts. It's only going to about one and a half volts. And that is what we call the steady state error, right? My set point is still five volts, but I didn't get anywhere near that. With a gain of one half, I have a huge steady state error. My signal should be way up here at five volts like it was with the open loop. Go back and look at the open loop. But uh, so I have this huge steady state error, all right? And the system was really slow, um, but it was faster. It actually came up to this final value, even though the final value wasn't anything near what it was before, but it actually came up to that final value much faster than an open loop. So we sped up the system, but now we have some huge error. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase my gain to one, and I'm going to hit uh, set again. And actually, I forgot to flip the switch back to zero, so that's it's discharging. I'm gonna re-energize my scope. And now I'm gonna energize this. So this is with a gain of one. So I went from, I doubled my gain. So you notice how now it jumps way up here to five, uh, but then it drops down. So the system responded faster but, and, and it has less steady state error, because remember, it's supposed to be all the way up here at five, and it's not, okay? It's, it's still at 
maybe two and a half or so. So there's still quite a bit of steady state error in here, but less error than we had before. So we increased the gain. We got our control signal was much higher. It went all the way up to five. It didn't go up that high before. Uh, and the system responded faster, and I have less steady state error, but I still have steady state error. I should be up here at five. All right, so I'm going to uh, increase my gain now to two. So my gain is now two. I flipped the switch to two. And I'm going to hit it again and capture this response. And you see now the gain or the control signal went off the scope because it, it actually went all the way up to 10. So I've actually got to, um, I actually have to change the scaling for my control signal. It was so large. So you see it stays 10 for a long time and then it starts coming back down. Okay, now remember, it actually is coming down to my steady state value here in this case to hold the capacitor at that voltage. But again, the, the capacitor should be at 5 volts. Okay, so it should be at 5 volts. So uh, it's still only at about 3.3 volts. So I still have steady state error. All right, so finally here I'm going to uh, kick it all the way up to 5 and try it again. So I'm going to flip. Now my gain is at 5, which is the highest gain that I've got on here right now. And I'm going to energize the control signal once again. Okay, and now you see that I actually have some overshoot. You see the blue actually went above the final value. Although notice it still hasn't broke five volts, right? Um, let me just turn the amplitude cursor on here for a minute. Okay, so right here is the five volt setting. This is where it should be going. And it's not going that high. Okay. But uh, so I still have steady state error. Anytime you do proportional control, I guarantee you're going to have some steady state error. You're not going to go to your set point. All right. So you're going to have to do something else to get rid of that error completely. But I did reduce the error. All right. But now you see that it's overshooting that final value. And then it comes back. So this little hump here above that line, if I adjust my cursor down here, Okay, you can see that the blue is going above that final value of where it ends. That's what we call overshoot. The yellow is the control system. Now, look how long the yellow is going up to 10, and it can't go beyond 10 because the control system can't go beyond 10. So you got to always consider your limitations on your control system. So it can't go beyond uh, 10. And so it just stays 10 for a very long time. Okay, now notice I've changed this to 2 volts. So the yellow is at, at 10 volts there. Um, 2, 4, wait a minute. Um, 2 volts per division. 2, 4, 6, 8. I guess it's actually just going to 8 volts right now and staying there. So the control system could actually go more than that, but it's not, um, the controller is not, is telling it not to go beyond that, okay? And so, uh, but it's uh, staying there for a while, and then once it sees that, you see right there, once the volt, the output gets above that final value, then it ends up dropping back down and trying to push the system back down. And then it's like, whoop, I pushed it too low and I need to push it back up. So you can see that's why it's bouncing around. So again, uh, this is on the one volt and you can see uh, you, it's cut off at the top here, but you can see how once we reach, you know, we're already kind of bringing the control system back down and we're trying to push it back down because we know we overshot and then we go under, we push it too low, we go under, all right, and we get these oscillations. So this will happen when you start increasing your gain. 
So the more you increase your gain, the more oscillations you can add into the system and the more overshoot you can have.